in a normal game of chess, white goes first, but they're an SJW, so they let black go first. Black thinks for too long, and white decides to go anyways. White starts off simple with a Japanese Waterloo move. Black is too afraid to admit he doesn't know how to play, so he just copies white. White assumes that he's playing the mirror's edge plunder and counters with a double twist horn push. Black, still with no idea what's going on, copies white again. White realises he has already lost and decides to take back move number one. Black advances one more spot, putting pressure on White's bishop. White, in a panic, also takes back his other move using a classic French surrendering technique. Black moves one piece back and another two forward for a net move of one. White, realising Black's mistake, takes his pawn with his knight, killing it instantly. Black now realises that not all pieces can move one forward and spends the rest of his turn studying the rules of chess. White flexes on Black by playing his turn lefty, moving his pawn two spaces. Black has finally learned how to play, however did not learn the strategy and takes White's knight. White uses his pawn to attack Black's rook. Black dodges and shifts to the side. White attacks again. Black once again dodges, and that's strike number three, which means he's out. White is in check and asks the rook politely not to attack his king. Black agrees not to take the king and instead plows through two of White's pawns. White takes Black's rook with bishop. Black claims he wasn't ready and decides to put his pawn back. White's pawn does a backflip, which attracts two of Black's pawns. Both Black pawns fight over the sexy White pawn, and one of them kills the other. White and Black Pawn move off board and start a new life, which White's Bishop disagrees with and he decides to leave. Black seems to be hesitating which piece to move and it looks like he decides to move White's Rook closer to his. White does a magic trick and takes one of Black's Bishops and turns it white. Black bribes White 15 euro and a holographic baseball card to tell him how he did the trick. White reveals that it was actually just Michael Jackson. He he. Black's Pawn just had a news leak and is now too embarrassed to stay. White places a risk piece in the middle of the board. Black places a checker piece. White places a bust of Einstein's head. Black upgrades his checker piece to a double. White places a taboo timer. Black places a poker chip on top. White taps three mana and plays putrefy, destroying target creature. Black uses dental floss to move his knight, claiming he didn't touch it so it doesn't count as his turn. He attempts to move his rook, which White quickly stops. White Bishop has been commissioned by the Lego police to plant evidence on Black's king. Black castles with knight. White replaces Bishop with a fake so he can go off and plant drugs. The horse kicks behind himself, knocking him out of Amongst the chaos, the white bishop slips in and plants the drugs. The police arrive to find weed stashed in the queen's place and shoot her for resisting arrest. During the commotion, the bishop slips back into place and is shot by the officer for planting it on the wrong person. The officer, of course, is suspended with pay. Black Pond goes through legal struggle after his divorce and loses custody over his kids. Gameplay is unaffected. Software patch white underscore pond underscore two has been removed. Black uses advance on turns and uses two to move rook twice. White bishop attaches to pawn and can now move both diagonal and do bounce shots. Black rolls for initiative, rolls a d20 and hits white rook so hard it's banished to the shadow realm. White bets $31 for no reason. Black raises with $751 monopoly dollars and it seems that white has matched with a shiny Snorlax. Black folds? White mocks black for folding. Black tips board and all the pieces stay together. White reads Sun Tzu Art of War and deceives the enemy by casually flipping the board around. Lights go off, and when they come back on, the board is back to normal. But all of White's money is gone. Strange. White's remaining pieces make a wall around the king, creating a defensive barrier. It looks like he's doing the inverted rook move, a lesson learned from the BBC3 programme. Now, Short appears to be inverting his rook. Black tries to sneak behind the wall, but steps on a landmine. White's queen gains a proton. Black's bishop gets tired and switches place with the other one. White's rook has become a sentient being, capable of feeling emotions and understanding the world around it, along with all the controllable disorganised chaos and entropy polluting the cosmos. <laughs> Happy Christmas, says Santa as he flies down drunk, lassoing Black's knights and flying off the board, never to be seen again. Black is now entering the late game, and so is White. It's anybody's game. It turns out that one of the black pieces is secretly the President of the United States. It's called a drone strike against the white team. Lucky for one, they've been playing the long game, and after 27 turns, the cyanide finally kicks in when two of the black pawns drop dead. Time passes in a stalemate. The white bishop has lost its erection at its old age and can't get it up anymore. Hey! Each team stares the other down, waiting for their opponent to make a move. Black's bishop gains an electron and brings White's Queen back to life through electromagnetism. However, the orbit is unstable due to the lack of neutrons and undergoes decay, killing both of them very slowly from radiation poisoning. Unfortunately, the two knights Santa took have been dropped out of the sky, landing on White's Bishop, destroying White's hopes of winning. Suddenly, an interdimensional wormhole opens up, tearing the fabric of reality in half, as the players are transported to a distant unknown outside. Each player moves one pawn forward, 
locking each other in an internal stalemate, for they can only attack diagonally. However, due to violations of COVID protocols, they have been removed. Both pieces, realizing they are the last left, both rush to the other side in the hopes of reaching the end and transforming into a queen. Now it's just the kings, in a never-ending chase around the board for a single victor. Black backs white into a corner, white begging for mercy, claiming that it's Thanksgiving and they should not be fighting, but rather joining in celebration. They decide to go around the board, saying two things they are thankful for. Black is thankful for his family and his job. White is thankful for the support of his friends, uh, along with this crowbar he has found. <laughs>